In this video, we're going to look at some basic techniques for editing game music. As you can see here, I've got a basic Pro Tools session with a few music loops already imported into my clips list. First, you'll need to decide which clip you want to use as the basis for your composition. In this case, it's going to be the sitar. So I'll grab the sitar clip, drop it into the tracks list, and Pro Tools will automatically create a new track and place the clip at the session start. As you can see, the clip is about 10 bars long, and its tempo is 104 beats per minute. My current Pro Tools session tempo is 120. Fortunately, there's an easy way to use the tempo of the clip as the tempo for your session. Simply click on the clip with the grabber, then either go to Event, Identify Beat, or press Command-I on the Mac or Control-I on Windows. This will bring up the Add Bar and Beat Markers dialog. As you can see, Pro Tools is telling me that the start of the clip is at bar 1, beat 1, but the end of the clip is at bar 10, beat 1. But I know that this is an 8-bar loop. So what I'll do is go ahead and change the end location to bar 9, beat 1. If you have a loop of a different length, you'll need to put a different value in here. For example, a 2-bar loop would end at bar 3, beat 1, and a 4-bar loop would end at bar 5, beat 1. Then I'll go ahead and click OK. As you can see, Pro Tools has now taken the tempo from the sitar loop and made it the tempo for the session. Now if we audition the loop, we should be able to watch the main counter and see that the bars and beat ruler is exactly matched to the beats in the clip. Now that we're finished with the sitar, let's go ahead and add a few more layers to our composition. Next I'll grab the pop drums clip and once again drag and drop it onto the tracks list. This clip is also at 104 beats per minute, but we're going to want to make sure that it aligns precisely to the grid. If you click the clip with the grabber and look at the edit selection fields in the toolbar, you can see that it doesn't quite match up to the grid. Fortunately, this is easy to fix. If we enable elastic audio on the track, and I'll go ahead and choose the rhythmic plugin, then I'll set my grid to one bar and use the time compression and expansion trimmer to time compress the clip to be exactly two bars long. Now we can go ahead and audition that, and it should be precisely matched to the grid. Then I'll go ahead and duplicate it a few times so that it's the same length as the sitar. I can do this by going to the Edit menu and choosing Duplicate, or by pressing Command-D on the Mac or Control-D on Windows. Now let's go ahead and repeat the previous steps to add in the synth bass. First, I'll drag the synth bass clip to the tracks list, and Pro Tools will automatically make a new track and place the synth bass at the beginning of the session. Then I'll enable the rhythmic plugin in Elastic Audio, and use the TCE trimmer to trim the clip to the nearest bar. And once again, we'll audition it to see how it sounds. Now I'm ready to arrange these layers so that I have three distinct sections for my game. I think it'll be good to start with just the sitar. So at the beginning, I'll go ahead and remove the pop drums and the synth bass. Then for my second section, I'll have all three layers playing. For the third and final section, I'll have just the drums and the bass. So I'll go ahead and select those and duplicate them one more time. Now I've got three distinct sections to my composition. Obviously, you could add more layers and make this composition as complex as you desire. Now we're going to create clip groups for each cue section. The best way to do this is to select each section in the timeline, and then choose Clip, Group, or press Command-Option-G on the Mac or Control-Alt-G on Windows. Then I'll select the next section and make another clip group and select the final section and make a third clip group. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and name our groups. Then let's give each group a unique color. I can do this by going to the window menu and choosing color palette. Then I can select the clip group and assign it a new color.
The last thing we'll want to do is to go into shuffle mode and make sure that the transitions between clips sound okay. We'll start by playing from idle into combat. And that one sounds okay, so let's listen to combat going into victory. And that sounds okay too. But now what we'll want to do is make sure that we can go from combat back to idle. So in shuffle mode, I can simply grab the combat clip, drag it to the beginning of the session, and it'll switch places with the idle clip. And now we can audition that transition. And that one sounds okay. And now we also have the opportunity to listen to the idle to victory transition. And that one sounds pretty good too. Now you're ready to master and export each of these clip groups as their own file. Then you'll be ready to implement them in the game.